This is KGW News at Sunrise. The push is on to get school resource officers back in PPS. This morning, we'll break down what a safety task force wants to do, including partnering with police. Plus. We disagree with this draft recommendation. It doesn't do enough. A new recommendation says regular mammograms should start earlier, but why some radiologists are saying it doesn't go far enough. And we are also live this morning at the Oregon Humane Society. Hello there, puppy. Aww. <laughs> uh, the Humane Society is getting ready for a huge event. Their 36th <laughs> annual Doggy Dash, which happens this Saturday. So this is Lily, a four-year-old cattle dog. Yes, Lily is available for adoption. So if you love that face, that's a face that you could have in your own home. Uh, we also have details on registration for the Doggy Dash. You can actually get half off that registration today, okay. so we'll share those details with you coming up here in a few minutes. All right, love Lily. Lots to look forward to on this Wednesday morning, middle of the week. And Roger's saying we're going to hit 70 plus yeah, today. Yeah, nice day. It's been 68 the last two days. Today, 74. I think most people would say it's right in that sweet spot, yep. right? Here's a look outside right now. Uh, sun comes up at 546, so our camera already is seeing some brightness and partly cloudy skies overhead. Everybody's dry. We are at 50 degrees out at the airport. We'll be 62 at noon. Now, it is a day that I expect to see afternoon thunderstorms develop over the Cascades, and we could see some showers over the coast range as well. Maybe some of that turns into a spotty shower storm here in the valley. Otherwise, we'll be dry, and we get up to a nice 74 for a high temperature. Back to you. Rob, thank you. Well, there are new recommendations this morning to make students in Portland Public Schools safer. PPS put together a task force and it's suggesting a partnership with Portland Police. That was actually just one of several recommendations that the task force gave at last night's school board meeting, all to address recent violence in and around Portland schools. For years, students of color voiced their concerns about how school resource officers treated them. So in 2020, shortly after the murder of George Floyd, the district scrapped its SRO program. Last night, though, the Safety and Security Task Force suggested walking that decision back a bit. But instead of having police officers in schools, they would simply have them stationed nearby. The task force says that move could help ward off criminals and would also give officers the amount of time they need to respond quickly when necessary. Our students, for the most part, don't really want to see armed, uniformed officers in their schools. But they do want they do want to know that they've got their back somehow. OK, take a look at your screen. Other suggestions include expanding the campus safety and youth violence prevention teams, creating a community walking patrol to walk kids to and from school, instituting a rapid response system for staff and requiring middle and high school students to wear ID badges at all times. Now, the school board had a lot of questions about how all of this will work. They hope to get a pilot program going this fall. We'll certainly keep following the discussion and let you know what happens. Now to some of your Wednesday morning headlines. Take a look at this fire. It broke out in a building on Reynolds High School grounds in Troutdale. It started just before 2 a.m. We're told this was a sort of storage building that caught fire. We've reached out to Gresham Fire for more information and we'll update you if we learn more. We're also following developments in another deadly shooting in Portland. It happened in the Hazelwood neighborhood. Police say they got to Burnside and Northeast 122nd a little after 8 o'clock last night and found a man dead when they arrived. The shooting shut down a part of Burnside and Max Lines, but this morning things are back to normal. No word on any arrests or suspects, but we'll let you know when we learn more. And today, Senate Democrats are planning to meet up with Republicans to discuss the walkout now heading into its eighth day. Republicans have been no shows because they say Democrats are considering bills that aren't plainly worded or written in a way the average person could understand. They say it's a violation of Senate rules and Oregon's constitution. There's no set time for today's meeting, but we'll keep you updated as this story develops. And those are some of your morning headlines. 
Fire crews in Canada are trying to get a handle on more than 80 wildfires in Alberta. They've called in Oregon firefighters to help them. Devin Haskins has more on the partnership between the two countries that made all of this possible. Good morning, Devin. Yeah, good morning, Brenda. At least 25 of those fires are considered out of control and they've forced more than 24,000 people from their homes. The Oregon Department of Forestry posted this photo to Twitter yesterday showing ODF crews entering Alberta. Oregon sent 22 fire crews ranging from management to ground crews. ODF says they got the call for help last Friday through what's called the Northwest Compact. That's a law that was signed 25 years ago. It allows five U.S. states and five Canadian territories to share resources without any delays in processing special permissions. ODF says the terrain is similar to Oregon and that firefighters are fully prepared to help wherever it's needed. Oregon firefighters are um, are uh, trained and equipped to, to deal with uh, different um, different fuel types, uh, depending on you know what they're going to encounter. And so some of the fuel types are, are very similar up in Alberta. Uh, they have um, kind of the Great Plains fuel type, lots of grass, lots of shrubs, and then they uh, can move into, um, you know, big timber, uh, much like the, the west side in Oregon. The fire crews will be there for two weeks before making the two day drive back home. They also say it's an opportunity to bring back new techniques that they may be able to utilize down here. Drew. All right, Devin, while you're covering that story for us, Governor Tina Kotek and state wildfire officials held a media briefing about what they expect for this year's wildfire season in Oregon. As KGW's Joe Ranieri explains, it's never a matter of if we'll see wildfires here. It's simply a matter of when they'll start. This spring has brought a healthy amount of snow for the Cascades and plenty of rain in the valley. But what state officials are paying close attention to is what this summer could bring. Drought intensity across the state is less than it was this time last year, although some regions have experienced persistent severe droughts. Oregon Governor Tina Kotek is preparing for what's expected to be another busy wildfire season, especially in the areas that haven't seen much spring rain. Particularly in eastern Oregon, where fire indices suggest an above average fire season. Kotek says just like any season, crews will face obstacles out in the field. There are several challenges uh, facing us, including capacity in rural areas that largely rely on volunteer fire services. One thing the Oregon Department of Forestry relies on is the technology aspect, which is something they're going to rely on again this season. We continue with our statewide uh, smoke detection system and the smoke detection cameras are a critical element uh, to the technology that's provided success. They also have spotters to look for fires in more of the rural areas. The agency has a state-owned aircraft that we have been utilizing to fly on the heels of lightning storms at night. Uh, to detect fires overnight. One thing everyone can do this summer to be prepared. But it's going to be up to every single one of us, every Oregonian to do our part to prevent human caused fires before they start. And take the steps now to be ready just in case. Prepare your yard. Have an evacuation plan. Have a to go kit. Have a plan if there is smoke in your community. Joe Ranieri, KGW News. Look outside right now from the Dallas Sky Cam. Pretty mild morning, but in that yeah. previous story, yeah, they were talking about the upcoming fire season and hot weather, and we're going to have some hot weather coming up this yeah, week. Yeah, we are. Um, a, a reminder, though, the biggest barometer for fire season statistically is the length of fire season. Mm. And the longer you can keep getting some spring rain, which we've had plenty of, and it's going to be getting hot this, mm. um, this coming weekend, but it still looks like we could have some decent showers and not an overly hot June. So if we can get all that pulled off, then the fire season becomes shorter, and that's the biggest barometer to a not so bad season. So fingers crossed. For Absolutely, us, right? that's good news. All right, here we go with um, what's going on for this weekend. Yeah, the hot weather's coming, 85 Friday. Today we'll be up in the 70s. Um, and then 92 Saturday, 95 Sunday, Monday 93. These are the records. We could tie the record Saturday, break it Mother's Day, tie it on Monday. Uh, and then after that, it looks like we're back down to the 80s. But it does appear that much of next week we'll see highs in the 80s, which would be above normal for this time of the year. It's still considered, especially if you don't have air conditioning, pretty gosh darn warm out there. All right, here's what's going on for today. Pretty quiet, a couple little specks of shower activity already popping, though, coming up from the south over both the Coast Range and the Cascades. And our future cast models, which I'll show you in a moment, 
do show the chances of some afternoon showers also over the coast range with the storms popping later today over the Cascades. We're partly cloudy out there right now. We're 50 degrees. We have calm winds it's going to be a really nice day overall outside of the scattered thunderstorm chances in the mountains. Uh, 42 in Astoria, 46 Salem, 44 in the Dalles. We saw that live shot out there in Wasco County a moment ago. 38 in John Day. It is freezing this morning on Baker City, 32. All right here's future cast. There's a spotty shower over uh, the coast range and then here are thunderstorms popping this afternoon at 3:30 over the Cascades. Now I'm saying that there's at least a chance I mean, we've got showers here and there and we're really unstable again today. There's a chance we could see some spotty storms here in the valley later today. Future cast does not show that, but it's possible. Uh, the modeling here we are at 8:30 does show once the sun goes down, the storms even over the mountains quickly fade away and then we're off and running with just uh, completely dry and for the most part completely sunny days tomorrow all the way into the weekend. The wider future cast look for those of you in central and eastern Oregon scattered shower storms most areas are anticipated. All right, uh, we've been in the 60s last few days. Today we'll warm it up into the 70s with lots of sunshine and really comfortable days. Show 73 in Salem. Winds will be light. Similar numbers up through southwest Washington. Longview's at 74 this afternoon. Um, most of us will have a dry, partly mostly sunny day. Just keep an eye that there is at least a chance for a spotty storm later on. 78 tomorrow, 85 Friday, then the hot weather we talked about Saturday, Sunday. There is a, a storm chance we're watching on Monday with what we call a cutoff low. And then Tuesday, there's the, the cool off, but still warm at 86 degrees. And that is your forecast. Okay, thank you, Rod. Mammograms, they save lives. And now doctors say people should start getting them earlier at 40 years old instead of 50. But we spoke to a radiologist who says that new recommendation should be even earlier. Also a reminder this morning that you can watch the Sunrise Show anytime you please. Thanks to KGW Plus, which is now available through Roku and Amazon Fire. You can just look for that KGW Plus icon right there. Add us to your home screen and stream Sunrise on your schedule.